Hola y bienvenidos a Medical Spanish with Michael. Today we're going to cover useful vocabulary for discussing lab results with your Spanish speaking patients. You'll learn uh, all of the components of a basic metabolic panel as well as phrases like are you fasting and important adjectives like high and low. As for me, I'm Michael, an experienced medical Spanish interpreter that wants to help you learn medical Spanish. So, empecemos. Let's get started. So the first two words that we're going to cover are pretty similar, almost identical in English. It's normal and abnormal. So in Spanish, this would be normal and anormal. And when you pronounce these, be sure to put the stress or intonation on the last syllable of the words so that you're stressing it. Um, so that would be normal, normal. And for abnormal, we would say anormal, anormal. Make sure you put the stress on the last syllable. And to say high and low, uh, you would say alto or alta for high and bajo or baja for low. And a way that I like to remember these is I like to think of the altar uh, in a church, which is something kind of superior or higher. And then um, to remember baja or bajo being low, you can think of the Baja Peninsula. Uh, this is below California. And then a couple of important modifiers that you can use are a little bit and very. So in Spanish, you would say un poco for a little bit. Kind of like uh, hablo un poco de español. I speak a little bit of Spanish. And to say very, you say muy, muy. And be sure to remember that these modifiers go before the adjectives just like they do in English. So knowing these new vocabulary words, then how would you say the following in Spanish? The result is a little low, but it's normal. And I'll give you some time to think about it. So in Spanish, we would say el resultado, and because we're talking about the location or position of the result um, being high or low, we want to use the verb estar. So we would say el resultado está, and then to say a little bit, un poco bajo, un poco bajo. But it's normal, we would say pero, and then because it's a characteristic, um, we would use the verb ser, pero es normal. And when you want to talk about the normal range of the results, you can use the vocabulary phrase los límites de referencia. So you can see that would be the reference limits. So knowing that, how would you say the following in Spanish? The normal range is from 65 to 99. So to say this in Spanish, it would be los límites de referencia son de, and 65 in Spanish is 65 with two S's and not 70, which is 70. So 65 a and 99 is 99. So putting that all together, it would be Los límites de referencia son de 65 a 99. So another great phrase for vocabulario general is to be fasting. So in Spanish, this is estar en ayunas. And to say, are you fasting in Spanish? Then you would say, está usted en ayunas? This would be the present tense. And if you want to ask in the past tense, then you can use the imperfect tense with the verb estar. So how would you say, were you fasting in Spanish? So because estar is an AR verb, then we know the imperfect ending is aba. 
So this would be, ¿Estaba usted en ayunas? Were you fasting? ¿Estaba usted en ayunas? So knowing this phrase, and that in Spanish, glucose is glucosa, then how would you say, your glucose was 130, a little high? Were you fasting? So feel free to pause and think about this if you need to. So in Spanish, this would be su glucosa fue, this is the preterite of the verb ser, fue de 130. And for some reason in Spanish, they use the preposition de when they're talking about results with the verb ser. Fue de 130, un poco alta. Estaba usted en ayunas? So now we're going to cover the individual components of the basic metabolic panel. So when you discuss a BMP or CMP or any other type of panel with your patient, uh, you can refer to this as un análisis de sangre um, for blood test. And in this análisis de sangre, for the majority of the components, all you have to do is change the English ending of the words and add an O or an A at the end. Uh, so I'll circle those now and give you a moment to think about what those would be in Spanish. So based on the previous example, we already know that glucose is glucosa. And similarly, creatinine is creatinina creatinina. And then going down the list, for sodium we have sodio, then potasio, potasio, then cloro, then calcio, calcio. And to talk about these as levels in the body, to say level in Spanish, then you would say el nivel, el nivel. And similar, similarly to normal and anormal, you can put the stress or intonation on the last syllable so that you're stressing that L at the end. Nivel. And to say serum, you can say el suero. El suero. So knowing all of those components, how would you say the following in Spanish? Your chloride level is 82. It's very low. So in Spanish, this would be su nivel, su nivel de cloro, your chloride level, es de 82. And don't forget to include that weird de in there uh, whenever we use the verb ser to describe a number for the result. Es de 82. And again, using the verb estar, es Está muy bajo. Está muy bajo. And now, looking at those components of the BMP that aren't quite as easy to translate, the blood urea nitrogen in Spanish would be el nitrógeno, el nitrógeno ureico, ureico en sangre, or it might be easier with your patients to say el B U N to talk about the English acronym. You might in, you might even blah, blah, blah. you might even hear some of your patients refer to it as el bun and pronouncing it as if it were a word and not an acronym. And the E G F R in Spanish would be el índice, the index, el índice estimado de filtración glomerular. So again, that is el índice estimado de filtración glomerular. Or referring to the English acronym, you could say el EGFR. And to avoid saying all of this, um, if you're pointing at it, then you could just say este valor, which would be this value, este valor. Or este resultado this result, este resultado. In order to say the BUN creatinine ratio in Spanish, this would be la proporción de BUN or de 
B O N A creatinina. And don't even get me started on how the translation for ratio is proportion, proporción in Spanish. And to say total carbon dioxide in Spanish, it would be el total del bicarbonato or el total del dióxido de carbono. So knowing this, then how would you say the BUN creatinine ratio is high? So this would be la proporción de BUN a creatinina and we want to use the verb estar, está, and because la proporción is feminine, we would say está alta, está alta. And another great useful phrase, how would we say all of the other results are normal? So in Spanish, this would be todos los otros resultados están normal. All right, that's all I have for now. I'm going to include a summary slide of all of the vocabulary and phrases that you've learned today so that you can take a screenshot of it and study it later. So that slide will come in three, two. I hope you're able to learn some useful vocabulary for your next Spanish speaking patient. Thank you all for watching. Uh, muchas gracias y nos vemos en el próximo video.